like to call this meeting to order, please. This time, you have a, an agenda in front of you. Is there a motion to adopt the approval of the agenda? I make a motion that we approve the agenda for the special call board meeting. Second, to move by the second that we approve the agenda for the special call, the agenda and the special call board meeting. Uh, are there any questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion is approved. Mr. Superintendent. Uh, yes, we've been, uh, as every single meeting seems to sound the same, it's a different meeting, but I participated in 950,272 hours of Zoom, Google Hangouts, Google Meets. Uh, I just need a virtual representation of myself. But um, One of the things we were able to do is uh, we participated in a uh, peaceful uh, unity rally uh, where we marched uh, downtown. Uh, we represented our district. Uh, Jim was there with us, David, and and Cedric both, and um, the morning as I was preparing uh, to walk, I called uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Connie Slaughter Harvey, and better known as Judge Count Constance Harvey, Sla uh, Harvey Slaughter, and, and I let her know that uh, I hated in 2020 that uh, the marches she did so long ago uh, apparently haven't made all the changes that we wanted to see, and um, I got to talk with her about uh, what we wanted to see and, and what the future might look like, and. Uh, we participated in that walk and I saw something that made me very proud um, to be uh, a Bixberger. Um, we walked in, uh, one of the things I saw was everybody from our community was there, uh, regardless of race, regardless of age, regardless of sex, uh, political affiliation. Uh, we, we came together to say that um, not only are we fighting a COVID virus, but we're fighting a long lasting racism virus. Uh, and it is something that long since needs to be cured and dead. Um, I want to say openly to every uh, community member, to our staff, uh, to our students, um, that this board and this superintendent is committed to uh, removing all sense of uh, blatant racism uh, that's there. In addition to that, uh, the processes that are implicit racism, uh, implicit uh, prejudices are, that are there. Um, and I think open formats where our students and, and staff can talk uh, allow us to um, change the way the future is going to look forever. Um, and this board has been very aggressive in that, and I appreciate their support uh, since we've gotten here. Um, one of the key factors uh, was, was uh, uh, look at this community and what should have been done for so long ago is now being done. Uh, it's everywhere you look. In addition to that, uh, I'm, I'm reminded of the, the fact that three African-American males were taking college courses uh, the day I took over the superintendency. And because of this board, uh, the intentional um, uh, attainment and, and the breaching of barriers and the destroying of people that are standing in the way. Uh, we've, we had uh, 7,000 college credit hours, uh, almost eight, that were earned just last year. Um, that's a big uh, statement of the heart of this board, and I, I count it a privilege to walk uh, with them, uh, for them, um, and, and in support of our students and our community. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, for, for us uh, to look at what's taking place all across our nation, it's, it's, it's an issue um, that, that um, hopefully will be on a short lease if we give it our full effort uh, to, to, um, to, to change. And uh, again, it was, it was a good moment. It was, it was great to be able to be there. Um, Coach, I did call him, and he's probably the walkingest member of our board, and uh, he, was, uh, he wasn't able to attend to, due to uh, some health issues and a recent procedure, but uh, I told him uh, we were all walking for him. So, um, In addition to that, we met with the uh, COVID update today. Uh, and we have in the past, we, we've had, uh, I, I, you know, a, a tongue-in-cheek joke about the amount of uh, um, meetings that we've had, but we, we really have had a lot. Uh, the, the resounding um, thing, and, and Jim was on one earlier with the uh, NSBA with us today, uh, the same questions are all over. The same questions are all across the nation. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? And so many folks are at, at the precipice of making those decisions. We had some really good conversations and some uh, good uh, outcomes. The things that we can solidly say uh, is that this district will have a uh, hybrid approach uh, to restart. We will have an in-face uh, uh, on school campus uh, as we are able with appropriate um, uh, equipment and appropriate protection old devices and structures. Um, and what those all look like today, I can't, uh, 
give you, but the building principals are creating those and we'll submit those independently and we will uh, get those to you in the public. Um, one of the things we were able to do um, uh, at the stop of school was an online virtual and we are as solid as any district out there for that. That will remain an option for our parents um, because one of the things that um, our, our committee and, and we had uh, all principals were able to weigh in on, we know there's going to be multiple options that people are going to need to feel comfortable and safe uh, and we want to take all measures uh, to do that and we believe that um, we can uh, accommodate those. Um, some of the things we're still working through and we do not have a good answer for is transportation. Uh, there are some CDC uh, regs that uh, are, let me rephrase that, recommendations uh, that are just implausible. Um, so, so I think when we get down to uh, the final de de definitions, um, there's going to have to be some decisions that we make that are not compliant to those recommendations due to the impossibility of their execution. Um, there are several school districts that are, you know, coming out with their plans and, um, you know, we're normally uh, right up front and we wanted to make sure that we had the best information uh, as possible and what we were being allowed to do. Uh, mitigating uh, fundamentally what's best for children is my primary purpose. Uh, so whatever is going to be best for the kids, I want to be out there. Um, and, and kids that don't feel safe can't learn uh, in environments that don't uh, meet the needs of everybody uh, aren't, aren't a solution. So inside that we will have virtual solutions. Um, it's no secret to anybody in this room because we've been doing a, uh, a virtual school for about three years now. So we have that solution. We'll continue to provide that solution and give options to those parents. Again, we don't know what that looks like for attendance. We don't know what that looks like. Uh, uh, but there are, um, and, and, and as much grief as I may give them from time to time, and the DE uh, did step up with some uh, recommendations. We'll be bringing those uh, to the next board meeting uh, at a minimum. Uh, those are the recommendations that we're going to bring because uh, we feel comfortable that uh, most, if not all of those, we can uh, comply to uh, with our individual plans uh, in addition to that. Uh, also, uh, we will be looking at, um, and we did look at our thought exchange. Uh, we had it out for about um, just short of, of uh, a week, um, and we had 59,000 uh, ratings to that, and it was uh, it was great. We had a lot of good uh, feedback, and the thing that was was very clear is that uh, we uh, we had I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 900 parents um, that that responded to that, and it was very polarized. We had some that are. You know, I want to come back, and some that I'm not, I'm, I'm not comfortable with my child being there yet. So I think that gave us a, a, a good impetus to say that we're going to have a blended approach upon our uh, arrival. Um, and then, uh, you know, mitigating the, uh, the staff and uh, the safety uh, there. Uh, and I, I know being bus transportation being the one because there's no bus out there with six feet uh, of um, social distancing available. Uh, and um, so we'll be coming to you with, with those recommendations um, at the next board meeting. Um, and, and uh, you know, that will guide those uh, big decisions as we start. So in essence, we already have an approved calendar. Uh, it's out there. Uh, John Elford was there with us today. Um, the big holdup is if uh, we, to make, to ensure that we have all the safety equipment on site, uh, if any of those are delayed in shipping or anything like that, we might be looking at a delay of start. If not, uh, we plan on delivering the in, uh, instruction on the first day uh, that is currently on the calendar. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, the July. universities are looking at you know not having some of those short holidays in the fall semester in order to have some time saved up if when winter hits that we have an outbreak. Sure. So even though our calendar is already established, do we have an option of taking away those three-day weekends that we have every month? Sure. I mean, every month we have a three-day weekend. Sure. So taking away the three-day weekend at Labor Day, the three-day weekend at Columbus Day, um, shortening our Thanksgiving holiday in order to give us that time frame that if winter hits and we are stuck with the shutdown that we've got some backup days that we've already or is that an option is that something that sure. we're looking at yeah that's always an option one of the uh and, and again chad doesn't have crystal ball right right none of us do but if this is truly a pandemic which i'm pretty convinced uh that we've got a lot of data that says it is the moment that we open our doors and we bring right. everybody onto our campus it won't be long until no. we have to uh, as a state, uh, do what we've done before, and that's that's a guess. 
Uh, but we're, we're going to be prepared for either. Uh, in that, we want, uh, we want all the kids to be able to get the best quality of instruction. We know that happens best in front of a teacher. Uh, so trying to find that, especially uh, one of the things that was resounding, and I think from, from my staff, from all the principals, the people that were on the content, and the, the thought exchange was um, our, our younger kids. Uh, you know, and when you start talking about processes on buses, uh, what happens when a kid uh, that's in second grade to the bus stop and you show up and you take a temperature that's too high and you leave them at the bus stop? No, you gotta bring them to school. So inside of that, uh, I will say that there are some questions uh, that we will get some answers to as it relates to liability waivers. Um, and, uh, but I think it's great that uh, you know, we have the background or the backup uh, of a virtual delivery system. Um, some, of the, some of the superintendents, again, um, at the sake of Sam, have done it, just don't have that as an option. Um, so, you know, their, their plan doesn't have that because they can't deliver that. Um, but so there is an option for us to change our school calendar if we choose to. Certainly. Uh, and y'all can do that at any point. Y'all can extend it. And, and until or if uh, uh, there is any type of testing waiver, uh, we will keep all of our instructional days within that testing framework time. Um, it's just not fair to kids or um, anyone alike uh, to, to gamble. Uh, their graduation on an assessment that we don't provide adequate days. So those any days that we take in the beginning uh, will be uh, adjusted before those times so that, uh, and that's exactly what we discussed, is shortening those holidays. Um, uh, you know, now if it happens like it did last year, there will be a shutdown that, that those days are waived. Um, I'll tell you that MDE also, uh, the, the state board uh, approved some uh, uh, time waivers um, and some 180 day waivers. Uh, with that being said, we already have them. Uh, we're a district of innovation, so honestly, I don't know of anything that uh, we gained from what they did, but other districts did. Um, so, so again, I think we're, we're, we're poised for a, a good approach, and I think if we get you know two, three weeks, four or five weeks into it, um, just understanding that there has to be flexibility in what we decide to do, um, and, and the flexibility in individual schools. If it happens, uh, at one school versus the other, and um, it could, you know, uh, one case can change everything. And, uh, you know, and the parents' um, safety and security and what they feel for their kids can change based on, uh, you know, two, two diagnoses in the community, and then next day we have, uh, you know, half of our, our uh, people decide they want their kids at home. Um, so, in that, we're trying to be as flexible and supportive of the community um, and, and our staff as we possibly can within that. Um, so, Mr. Chief, yes, sir. something you just mentioned, and I think this is what you were alluding to, is um, they, on the instructional days, yes. they have reduced it from 5.5 hours to four. to four per day. And that's for, that's for on-site instruction, not limited. Gotcha. And then the Carnegie units have gone from 140 to 70 minutes required. Mm -hmm. And what that does, I, you know, and I, I guess the mindset behind that was maybe they're uh, reducing the amount of time that you're on on site due to uh, maybe screening procedures. Um, you know, because we will uh, have those in place. That's part of the big discussion too. Is you know, if you have a thousand students coming in the door, right, how do you... you got to get them in I, and get them in class. It's going to take you an hour to tip right. every kid and get them in and out. Uh, but, but definitively, we have no way to do anything but one route a day. Uh, and and uh, Mr. Bass, he was one of the members of our council today, and we talked through that every way we could. Um, we, we, we do not have the personnel. We do not have the time. Um, and unless you're going to look at removing... Uh, it, for example, and I've used this as a, an example uh, before, but if you take a bus route that now has to have seven bus routes, in essence, the only way that we could alter what we do to fit that is we would have to run seven days of that one route and takes a seventh of the kids each time that rolls. Uh, and now you're talking about people. Um, yeah, we're looking at a whole generation of children that wouldn't be, wouldn't be educated in Vicksburg, and, and that's... In a traditional sense. Right, well, I, well even in a non-traditional sense, you're looking at... Families are trying to go back to work, and if we as a district are not, don't have our doors open, right. and all families, like we had the last nine weeks, are required to have their children at home, they're either going to be kids that are at home alone Absolutely. without a parent, or they're, 
they're going to be there with the parent, and the parents don't have the income. That's right. And so we're looking at a tragedy in the makings. Yep. And as a district, I think that our mindset needs to be that we need to do whatever we can to encompass the entire community. I do too. And that means opening our doors so that people can go back to work and children can come to school. And by doing the hybrid, that allows us the people that aren't comfortable, kids that have special needs or that have online um, medical conditions, well, that allows them to continue their education at home. Correct. And I, I couldn't be more proud of you for making those decisions. I think that you are well worth your money and you have done a phenomenal job. Wow, thank and you. I, am, I am really proud of us making the decision to open our doors because we've got kids that need us. Yep. And we have parents that need us. Oh, because I, I mean, we're seeing, I see parents that are like, oh my God, if I have to teach my kid again, we're going to kill each other. I mean, it really is not what we signed up for. That's correct. You know, I mean, that joke that was on Facebook that all those parent teachers that said, you have the nicest kid. I love your kid. They lied to me for the last six years. And I think that's true. That's so, good. thank you. One other thing is, of course, you, uh, you and David and uh, Doc know this pretty well. I'd just like for them, other people to, to know that have not read this, they've said that the district must establish graduation requirements for the 2021 20, school year. And grading. And grading. And then it also says. By September. School so you all see some uh, policies coming. Local school boards shall establish criteria for academic promotions, progression, retention of uh, prior to the 2021 school's first day. And one other thing I'm reading here. The local school board shall establish uniform grading policies for the 2021 school year prior to the first day of school. Yep. So, so all of that's gonna come to us in next in, and you will in see, the July board meeting. July board. And you will see that maybe. Well it's gotta come to us in the June because if it's a policy it's gotta sit for 30 days. So Correct. we've got to have all those policies next week. And it's gonna be incredibly flexible. So inside of that it's gonna be what we currently have plus uh, and an either or much like what you saw at the end of the nine weeks last time. Um, I'm not and refuse to unless I'm told by some entity to do anything that's going to put a child in a deficit um, based on this virus, this disease, and the structure. So um, all the solutions that we have, uh, you will see that those are going to have um, an option that's in there. Because ultimately, well, it's, it's either fluid. or have a policy. We've got to be fluid right now. We yeah. can't be. Well, oddly enough, I, I'm not, and I haven't decided whether I even should say this, but I'm, I'm, you have the authority as an LEA to decide policy changes throughout the year anyway. So whether we submit them something that needs to be changed later, uh, y'all have the authority to do that anyway. So, I mean, case in point, at the end of last uh, semester, we had to change things because the whole nature of education changed and y'all were able to agree, uh, to agree. So whatever you decide is gonna be flexible enough that it can be altered or edited based on the needs of what we have. Um, and we wouldn't do anything to change any big sweeping um, requirements uh, just because that's not what we do. So. Any other questions? All right, just know this has been a, it's been, it's been uh, quite the adventure. Uh, you know, uh, I think you, you uh, You'll see a lot of um, districts that will come out with very similar um, flexible amorphic plans. So. All right, I think that's me. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Yes, sir. Uh, do we have anyone for the review only for item Our C? Line. Item C. Dr. Prather. Dr. Prather. Yes, sir. I presented to the board uh, a summary of the, the cost and also the question of if these were removed. And if there are not any additional questions, we'll put it on the board. 
said that she said she said remember this was the one that had the individual classes so it's got all the toes and everything and um, you don't have any other questions we'll go live like that's what's for it's funded by federal funds all funded correct yeah so do we need to take action on this not today. Not today. But, uh, uh, Dr. Prather. Yes. Again, uh, uh, from last month's meeting, uh, I was the person that uh, asked these dumb questions, so I'll ask it to you since you're here. Okay. My biggest concern is, was, and shall be is it was a $36,000 if they came in person, different, different it's contract. contract. Oh, this is something different. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is a, this I, is the I, one. I, this is the one that. A thirty-six thousand. No, ma'am. I stand to be corrected. Hold on, just a second. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. That's but that's number two. Yeah, we didn't we didn't have the total last month on this, oh, and y'all. Because I'm just not. Yeah, y'all could have approved the is I ready. That's the instructional uh, Some platform we've been using for the last three years. Okay. Yes. Uh, Doc, would you make sure you're here? Because I, I, I can't read on the spot. I'm not that smart. I was sitting behind the um, smart students. So uh, next 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 uh, meeting, next yeah, Thursday, I'll good. either have questions or not. Please. Would you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> be, be at the next board meeting. Did you say to be the next board meeting? Yeah, just be the next board meeting. Would you like now? I'm in the office. No, no man. I, I okay, walk down the hall. <laughs> Did you have any other? I can't read. Do you have any other concerns with the next month? Uh, Mr. Okay, Mr. Steve. Uh, no, ma'am. Thank you very much, Doc. All right, okay. we don't have any action that has to be done. No, it's no, this is just for review only. Okay. The next one is two. Okay, Clark Institute, are they here? Lucy, no, um, this should have been pulled because we're, um, we talked to Buck Institute and got some options on what can happen. Yes, sir. And we're running it by Briggs and he's going to talk to them on what we need to do because part of this contract has been initiated and when, we, when COVID hit, we could not fulfill the remainder of the contract. So, Briggs is left over from last year. Briggs is going to decide with their attorney how we finish the rest of the contract. Thank you, sir. So, you'll, you'll know more next week. Yes, sir. So we're going to the bond project now. Jason, is that you? It is. That is me. Um, a brief request um, that popped up last, meet, last uh, meeting with uh, changes. Um, yeah. Currently, uh, the way it is uh, started with the bond issue is if there is a change on a project with this, which is within the project contingency. So every project that we build in the district has contingency built in. It's uh, lump sum figures, and it ranges from four hundred thousand at Warren Central to twenty five thousand dollars for a roofing project, um, and that is for latent conditions, changes that you may make in the job. Uh, the threshold for approval on that was fifteen thousand, and uh, Bill Sanford. Um, would review that with us and then he would sign off on that. Um, recently as the projects have grown a little bit and I'll use last month's example, um, we had the, the dirt work issue at Beaumar um, and it was 26,000. It was 26,000 uh, for that and that issue sat there and we felt it was late condition and it needed to be uh, approved but it sat for about 16 days waiting on the board meeting. Um, so we were requesting if it was possible to increase, to basically double that amount of bills approval um, to 30,000. With, with and my said, We had a conversation with Briggs, anything over, up to 15 is still billed as you would approved it, and 15 to 30 would include Mr. Sheely's approval on that. And then you would still get the report on the final change order at the job of what was approved in and out of those items. But again, it's not a change order that changes the contract. Uh, these are things, unforeseen late conditions, water issue, you want to change paint colors, whatever it may be. Jason, I, first of all, I, I, I'm glad that Mr. Sheet is getting involved on the other 15 with that, but I just have a, I'm a little baffled here. This is not you all's first rodeo. No, sir. And what percentage 
are we through with the projects that's going on right now? Ten from from a dollar percentage? No, uh, no sir. A uh, 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 working percentage. You have bid everything. Everything has. There's not a project left in the district to bid. Okay. Oh, say, um, say like Vicksburg. What what percentage are you through with it? I would say Vicksburg is probably sixty five percent complete. And so Warren Central would be. I'm just throwing out a name. Little uh, right at fifty. They're okay. a little behind. And then uh, Beachwood and all of those. So yeah. so pretty much everybody's over fifty percent. Except for. Uh, uh, except for Beaumar, Warrenton, South Park, South Park, and Redwood. So they're all close. So, and, and that's, that's where I'm going with the additional 15 that you're, you're asking for. We, we, we've got all the four projects that are roughly 50% done. And, and again, this is not the first rodeo, so I'm, I'm just trying to visualize. And then you talk about the conting contingencies that if it doesn't work over at Beaumont, you can take that and be distributed somewhere else. Am I correct? No, no. contingencies is job is specific. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. so, so, you, so you take no contingencies to, to any other? You guys do that. Yeah. So if you, when I'll give you a prime example. Next week you will see this see us bring you substantial completions on the roofing projects at uh, Sherman Avenue and Dana Road, and you will be getting back close to $50,000 in contingency. It's your decision what what to do with that um, for other bond related. It's, it's got to be used for bond related projects. I understand. But, but yes, that's yours. The number 15 came from Mr. Joe. And y'all, you know, right. and, and that's first right. of all, Chad would think I could do a dollar would be fine because that I had no liability in it. So, I mean, it, it's nothing I want to do just from the process of uh, them being able to complete things. Right, and they're, they're waiting on us for a board. That's correct. And, and it can be and anywhere from fair, three weeks to four. I think you'll agree with me on this. Since most of our projects are over 50%, all the unforeseen, not all the unforeseen, but most of those unforeseen things like geotechnical problems or uh, you know, mm -hmm. asbestos, mm -hmm. whatever it is, are handled. So I would imagine that to this is to speed things up. That's correct. Yep. That's it. And, and this is an arbitrary amount was picked by Mr. Joe. Oh, I don't, no, no, again, no, no, I don't no, care no. if it's 15, I don't care if it's 30, if it was one, that just meant Chad don't have any liability whatsoever. Right. But, but in the sake of, because the projects are just, they're teetering right around there. And, you know, for example, I think we got one that was for 19,000 uh, for a handicap accessible uh, elevator. But because we couldn't do this because of that number, that was kind of the impetus of conversation. If y'all are comfortable with 30, I am. If not, we can leave it at 15. No, no, I, mean, I, I, I have no, I don't understand any of that. Let me just tell you that. As long as, as, long as I don't have to go to jail, I'm buying. Well, and Maybe. as long as it's sticking within the budget, I don't right. know. I mean, it well, could be 50,000 well, as long well, as we're sticking within. Well, I, I, but, but you want to make sure that, you know, a change order means what? That, that something wasn't right, right? Right. Somebody's. There's dollars that's being yeah, there. That's right. In a change it, order. A change order is a dollar order. It is not that's a correct. change order. That's right. right. Yes, so correct. that's my, there again. That's right. I look at hey, the right, right, right. I got you. A change order in any degree, whether it's one dollar or negative dollars, has to come to I'm you because it. it changes the contract. And let me, one of the, one of the perspectives that I, I think was important from, from my understanding is because I pressed Gary and, and, and Jason pretty hard on the front end with some late condition things that they are experts and they can foresee. The only problem is if they project foresee and they put it in the bid, then we're gonna pay for it no matter what because the contractor's gonna get their money. Now, if you leave it as late conditions in the, uh, the, the contingency, if it never happens, then that's money we get to keep. Right. If, it, if it does happen, even though just, you know, for, in the example I got jumped on about, I didn't get jumped on, corrected or enlightened, if you will, was the fact that there's exposed asbestos in the uh, in, in the ceiling, then obviously that pipe that goes into the wall has asbestos in it too. But from the perspective of that, uh, they didn't know until they got into the wall that it actually did. And had they bid it with it on there, we would have been paying for it even if the contractor even if didn't have there. to remove it. Right. So to me, it, it, it clarified that for me just a little bit. Um, so the contingency is basically the, the budget that's sitting there to deal with unforeseen stuff. And um, so that. That was kind of why we did this, and I just told them that uh, again, it's your 
your discretion, you know, because I'm not going to spend any money uh, that, that we're not required to spend. Right. Um, but but for to uh, speed the process up, we wanted to move that to 30. If y'all are okay with that. Um, and we and, and we'll, we'll be getting updates. Yes, yeah, so you, which you will have that. details. Um, yeah, that's right. You, you get the contingency law report with the project final. Well, and that was a good point that um, Jim made. This is not change order money that we're talking about because that is above and beyond the budget. Yeah. This is money that's currently in the budget that um, yeah. we're just asking for. Now, if we get past contingency, you're going to see it for a dollar. That's correct. Because that's, that's above the approved budgetary expenditure for the project. Right. Okay. I'll make a motion that we increase, that we approve the, to increase the amount not needing board approval from $15,000 to $30,000 with anything above $15,000 being approved by Chad. And Bill. Yes. And Bill, yes. I second that motion. It's been moved and properly, it's been approved and properly second that we keep the 15, the up to 15,000 with Bill Sanders for anything over 15,000 shall be signed off by the superintendent or his designee up to 30,000 up to 30,000 is, is that okay with you yes sir? I'm fine. okay so there's a motion it's been approved are you ready to vote really? all in favor say aye aye opposed like sign motion so care so if we get a time crunch doesn't mean you get to uh, <laughs> you get to make the set up the if, if, I got, if I got COVID right, <laughs> right. so do we have any other business <laughs> thank you guys you'll have a cool bond update next next week uh, thank you, you senior sir. school boards I, yes. I do have one thing that I completely left out as a bullet I yes, am uh, and Laura's on here and if there's any explanation NDE uh, always required federal programs to be LEA approved for the budget cafeteria does not work that way uh, NDE has now changed the requirement for reporting for federal programs to be identical to the cafeteria. Now you'll be getting a, a, a beginning of the all those amendment votes and all that stuff that y'all always did. Y'all won't see that anymore unless that's something y'all want to continue with. So I just wanted you to be aware that there's going to be a change in that, and I didn't want Laura to get in trouble uh, because y'all are expecting something from her that's different than. Mr. Shealy, can I, um, for the board, I'd like to, um, as a board, I think we all would like to lend our sympathies to the family who lost their child yesterday. I'm so sorry. Um, and it is my understanding it is one of our children it in is. our district as well. And um, our sympathy goes out to the family. It goes out to everybody who's um, impacted by this. And, and I, I just would like to say I'm really sorry. Yeah, it's a travesty. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, sorry. Mr. President. Yes, sir. One uh, one comment and one uh, question to the comment is just want to go back to something Ms. Bullard said earlier about the policies. And obviously, when we're in times like we are right now, you certainly have the ability to waive the set aside rule for a month because sometimes you need to adopt policies quickly. So if you want to bring something, a policy change for next month, I will just add that it, you've certainly got the authority to do that by waiving it, uh, that, re that requirement and your usual practice that you have been set aside for a month. And the comment, I mean, the question I have is just, I didn't hear at the beginning, so my sounds are very good, uh, whether or not I'll attach the notice of the special call meeting to the minutes. I don't know if I heard that motion. Yeah, it was posted. Okay. But, but, but did you, but did you did attach it to the minutes? That the special call was our post Yeah. We will on that. We, Thank you, uh, Mr. Attorney. Yeah, yes. it, maybe I just want to make sure that there's a motion to attach the notice to the minutes to that. I make a motion to attach the notice of the special call board meeting to the minutes, please. Sure. The motion by the second that we approve the um, notice to be attached to the minutes. Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Those like sign. Motion is approved. Do you have anything else, Mr. Attorney? No, sir. Good. Thank Thank you, sir. Do we have any other business? No other business? This meeting is adjourned.